Welcome to the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Thank you for joining our weekly discussion around grief, mental health, and your overall personal wellness. The Grief Bully Podcast will serve as a vehicle to help you navigate life's journey. Be sure to subscribe, review, and share the podcast with anyone in your life that you think it will help. Let's bully grief together. What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Today is Monday, October the 11th. We are back in the studio rocking and rolling episode 113. And guys, I am not by myself. I do have a very, very special guest with me in the building against her own will. Yes, I have forced my mother, the one and only, Shirley Pastor Jizzy. What up? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. She's so scared, guys. <laughs> Listen, be kind to my mom. I've got her on the show with me. We're just going to kick back, chill, relax, and get into this conversation. So we're driving here, and I'm like, Mom, I want you to get on to the episode. And she says, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't know what we're going to talk about. But I never know what we're going to talk about. We just get into it. This is the thing. If you don't know this, which you probably don't, my mom does this every day. She speaks on her Facebook Live. She's a pastor. She's rocking and rolling. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. This woman has been extremely consistent for how many years with your 3 a.m. prayer? Like 13 years. 13 mm-hmm. years of waking up in the morning. 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. To help people. Yes. That's crazy. No. Listen, Griefully Tribe, I care a lot about you guys, but I got to tell you, I don't love you that much. I'm sorry. Call it thing a thing. I'm not waking up at 3 a.m. to be like, dear God, help. Th-. Like, are you lively? Like, what's, tell me, t- walk us into 3 a.m. What's going on at 3 a.m.? At 3 a.m., I'm up. I leave out of one room and go into my prayer room, and I dial the number, and I just go in. And so you're and inviting other, other people to get in there with you as well? Yes. They call in. Um, sometimes it's 20 people. Sometimes it may be one. And there's some nights there's just me. And you, and and you I don't stay hang, there. I don't, don't hang, hang up. up. No. <laughs> I continue to pray to 4 o'clock. So do they, get, or do they have the opportunity to get back on later? Or you're just on there regardless praying because that's your commitment to God? Um, that's my commitment to God. So whether they get on or anyone gets on, I'm there. That's my assignment. And I've been there faithfully for 13 years, going on 14 years now. Wow. And so I'm sitting here thinking that I'm doing something with my 113. Wow. Wait a minute. 13 years, 113th episode. This was meant to be. This is meant to be. So listen, the reason why I thought it'd be good to have the conversation with my mom is because of this. Listen, I give myself give as much of myself to you all as I absolutely can. And I know that there is not some sort of monetary guarantee on the other end of it. It's like I literally just the joy that I get from the comments, the feedback that I receive from the people out there that need to hear what I feel that God puts in me to say, it's the same thing that you do. Yes, it is. You just do it on Facebook Live and you're not in a studio with headphones on. But you're there because in addition to 3 a.m. prayer, you're actually also getting on Facebook Live every day, except for I think Monday, you give yourself a day. Yes. Monday, you get on at 9 a.m. to give them the inspiration for daily living on the wall with Pastor Jay, right? Yes. Why do you do that? To help someone. And it's not about me. It's about someone else helping them get through. And that's why it's called inspiration for daily living. To help them. Let's go, Pastor. Pastor no, has no. the pastor is in <laughs> the building. Inspiration no. for daily living. Let's get it. Yes, it is. It's inspiration to help you make it through another day. Because sometimes people get up and they don't know if they're going to make it. You know, That's so I um, try to encourage them to allow them to know they may endure for that night. But what comes but in the morning? joy comes in the morning. Woo! Joy does come in the morning. I don't know when their morning may be. It's not the 24 24 that we think it is because, you know, you could be going through for a moment and then, you know. Yeah, let's dive into that for a minute because that that actually spoke volumes to me. And so if you're out there, if you didn't listen to last week's episode, we talked a lot about what if I would have chosen joy. And we really sat and we parked in that whole conversation about joy. And so, like you said, a lot of people are waking up in the morning and they're not feeling good. They're not feeling like they can do it. They're feeling defeated. 
but you're telling them that joy can come in the morning. And so as a young pup in the word and just coming up, I've always thought of that in terms of the next day. And you just said it's not always that 24. You don't know when their joy may come. Can we get into that a little more? Okay. So we don't know because um, we're not in control of the time. So with, I'm just saying with God, you know, time is, God's timing is so different than our time, you know. Um, so at that present time, you be going through, you're suffering, you you know, you don't think you can make it. You don't think you can get through. And you may think because you woke up that morning when the daylight, the sun rises, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the day that you're going to have that joy. But you keep pressing in, you keep getting up and because you don't know what day, what day it will be. So you have the hope and expectation that it's going to come. So you just keep getting up and you keep pressing your way. You keep trying to get through. And so when you get up and you don't feel like this is the day, I'm that one that comes on and say, hey, this is Pastor Jay from Inspiration for Daily Living. And some people say, huh? But I'm going to help you get through that day for that moment. You know, you do. You do. You do a great job at it. it. It's no bias just because you're my mother, but seriously, I think that it's I always told you this, and this is a true a true story. I said to you that although growing up we may not have had everything and we all have our shortcomings and we have our areas of, of lack or things that we just don't know, but I always said that the one thing that you gave me that is priceless, probably the best gift someone could have ever given me was God, was your faith. And so being able to just watch that, that consistency, that there's more in my mind of you being or actually nurturing and growing in your relationship with God than there is anything else. And so always being able to see that, that that rock, because there's been times I joked in the beginning about not getting on that 3 a.m., but there's been plenty of nights in my journey of growing up as a young adult. I don't know if I was drunk on them or not, or a little hungover or something, but I, I those 3 a.m.s have come through where I a break up or going through things where I can't sleep. And I'm like, oh, I know my mom is on there. I'm going to get on. And I may not say anything, but to just listen. And I think that's a beautiful thing that you've been able to do that and create that space for a lot of people. Because I always talk about grief really coming in these waves at nighttime, at that late, that late night hour. So why did you choose 3 a.m.? Is there some significance to that? Well, actually, because that's the darkest hour. And people feel like that's the darkest hour of their life. And so to help them bring some light to that. So even in the 3 a.m. prayer, you know, wailing on the wall, you know, crying out, you know, um, before him. And so and it was really not me. It was more so God assignment for me to do, you know, and even with just even within myself, in our personal space, um, just going through. And being able to just cry out to him when no one else is around, you know, you get, I mean, lights out, everything is, you know, um, silence, and you get to go and pull away. Because during the course of the day, you know, so much busy things are going on. You know, we got so much, you got to go to work, you got to feed, you know, you got a lot of things to do. So that hour, and it's like that hour when, um, you know, Jesus was walking across the water at 3 a.m. It was like, that's that watch, you know, that he told them to go to the other side. And so with that being said, that's the hour that God chose for me to be able to help somebody. You know, and there's a lot of, and, 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 you know, it's a lot of bathroom runs. You know, people right. get up in that right. middle of the night. It's like, you know, you might have insomnia. So, you know, jump on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely plug that for sure. I wonder this. So for me doing the grief bully work and what I try to do out here in these grief streets and showing up for the brokenhearted and those people is really important to me. But what I've also learned is that while, yes, I am doing this for them, I am showing up for them. I've also been really helping myself. I've been helping myself in a tremendous way because, for one, you got to practice what you preach. And I've had plenty of days this past week where I had to remind myself of who I am and remind myself of, of what I'm actually doing because I have felt defeated and I have felt overwhelmed. And then I remind myself like, oh, yeah. You can choose joy. You can pick yourself up. You can do this. You can allow yourself to have those moments, but then you can bounce back. Has the things that you've been doing as far as one, just ministry in general, two, the inspiration for daily living and three to three a.m. prayer, like how have those been a blessing to your life? I'm sure people who follow you, your friends, your your peers would love to hear that because we all see you giving, giving, giving so much of yourself to so many people. How has that actually blessed your life, if at all? Because to help me, just the fact that I'm getting up and I'm praying and the fact that I'm sharing something with somebody else, encouraging them to see them get through it, it helps me know that I can get through. 
You know, they said you got to practice what you preach, as you said. You know, you got to eat. Before you can give it to somebody else, you have to eat it yourself. So by me helping me, even in my darkest times, you know, getting through. And I said, you know what? I can get through this. I can help somebody else get through it. Because realizing that your life isn't about you. It's not even for you. It is for somebody else. So the purpose in there. And it's something that you always say. You always say, put your hand on your chest. And you say, do you feel that? That's your heartbeat. That means you got purpose. Amen. So I take that. When you stop, I take it and say, you know what? I do have purpose. And there's times when, you know, when I'm really going through, I'm like, oh, man. And I feel like I, I can feel someone else's pain. I can feel what they're going through. When you don't want to hear somebody else telling you, you can make it, you know, but you keep coming back. And that's what I do consistently. I keep showing up. If no one else shows up, I show up. And yeah. I show up not just for them. I show up for myself as well. That's beautiful. And this is the thing. This episode is dropping on the 11th of October. And I'm not going to get out of here before I say that's my queen's birthday October the 11th, that's your birthday. And you're going to be, can I put it out there? I mean, you look, you looking good, girl. So don't even try to do that. So this, this beautiful, as you can see, young lady right here, aging like fine wine is going to be 61, 61 in the building. And so I know personally that through 61 years, a lot of that time was hell. Come on now. It's, it's been rough, but you're here. You're smiling. Your head is up. You're encouraging people. What would you offer to the audience to say a few things, if if not just one, allowed you to get here? Like, you really got here. Like, we we don't have the time today to go into everything that you've been through, but we will get to that unless you put it in a book and then you put it out there, which is what I pray that you will do. But that's a whole nother story. What What's kept you in, like, 61 and you didn't give up? What's up? Like, tell us a secret sauce. Um, prayer. And it's one scripture that I always stick with. He that begun a good, be confident in that thing, that he that begun a good work in you will complete it the day of Jesus Christ. And so I say that God is not done with me yet. Mm. You know, he's not done with me yet. Be patient. Put it, let me come back like that way. Say, be patient. God is not done with me yet. So that means he's not done. It's not over until he says it's over. So no matter what it is, I can get through because it's not over yet. I'm still here. So if I, every morning that I get up, even through the pain, through the agony, through the stress, you know, through the brokenness, because through brokenness, that's what helped me. Through the brokenness, you know, and through the brokenness, it's like you grow. You know, and I, and I just say this because even when, you know, you put a seed in the ground, you got to break the ground open for it to go in, right? And then for the seed to come back through, it has to break the ground back open to come back through. You're preaching, preaching. You know, no. It's a birthday but, sermon. Um, listen, no. But even the cloud, it breaks open for the rain to fall out, you know? And so with me saying all that, through that brokenness, there's blessings in that brokenness. And that's what's been keeping me in my faith. Wow. Do you guys hear that? Say that, that there's blessings in the brokenness. Yes. Because I can tell you one thing. The folks that are listening to this, oh, there are some areas where they feel broken, where they feel absolutely defeated. They feel, mom, I can't even t I can't even go into the DMs that I get, the messages that I get, the comments of where people are really trying to get through and they just feel like they can't. And that's why I can only pray that our conversation that we're having, this short dialogue can help them get through it because- Again, like I said, we don't have the time to get through it, but you've been through so much and you're still here and you're still preaching and you're still pressing and you're still giving that, that hope to them because you've dealt with grief. You've dealt with losses. In fact, the losses that you all have heard me speak about, she's had to, to endure them as well. She was married to my father. She was my grandmother's daughter-in-law, even beyond their marriage ending. She still was family and had to deal with that. She knew my friend Moet. So when I'm talking about these losses, that's just mine that I know, but her own as well. Can we please be an example to you that if you keep your head up and if you keep your head bowed before the Lord, and, and I, this is a fact about me, I was actually doing my, my keynote speaking event last week. And one of the questions presented to me was, do I do I look to God or is there religion or, or spirituality in my choosing of joy? And then I, and how do we do that? And so I gave examples and I talked about that. And then they also said, but what if someone is a non-believer? How would I advise them? And I have to be honest. I kind of was a little like, 
it's hard for me to give you that because my mom gave me God and faith at such a young age that it's always been my anchor. So there's never really been a time. There has been time where I've questioned religion itself and perhaps the Bible itself. But as far as God is my higher power and what I use it as my anchor, I haven't been there. So it was kind of hard to do that. Would you have any advice for someone? Because it's the thing. I can't assume that everyone that's listening is a believer. But what I can tell you guys is that I am and I'm going to talk about God and I'm going to do that unapologetically on my show. But I want to consider everybody and where they are and give them a little nugget of hope. So I remember having a conversation with you last week and you said that. And I said to you, but they got to, even if they're atheists, they got to believe that they have to believe something. So maybe they believe in that there isn't, but they believe that it isn't there. So there got to be something there for them to believe that it's not. So even in that, you know, believe in yourself, you know, believe in, put, put all that that you don't trust and all that you don't believe that there is a God in something that's greater than you that can help you. You know, I mean, I hope that you would come to know him. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to sit here and try to get you saved right now, but, you know, <laughs> but come on. But, you know, here, since we're since here, we're here, you know, like <laughs> nine o'clock, you can, <laughs> exactly. you know, you can meet me at 9 a.m., right, you know, right. but, you know, you have to believe in something. And, and if you can, if you want to start, believe in yourself. Believe that you can make it. Believe that you can get through. Believe that all things are possible. To those that believe. Yes. I love it. Listen, it has been a great, short, sweet episode. We wanted to just hop in and make sure we had the opportunity to have that conversation and to share this this moment with you. I think for me, again, there's a lot of people out there who have unfortunately lost their mother and they don't have their mother. And so I am super duper blessed to have you and not only have you, but the relationship that we have and the love that we have for one another and just really feeling like I'm rooted in life. And that's beautiful for me to have. And I want to give you those flowers and let you know that Yes, you share yourself with the world. You have a lot of spiritual daughters out there. and all, But listen, guys, I'm number, I'm number one, so I just want you guys to know that. But <laughs> anyway, but just having that in, in a true thing is for real. And so I hope that it encourages people that, that if you have those relationships in your life and maybe they're not on the best of terms or however it is, like talk through that thing. Speak about that thing. Pray about that because there's something to be said for going through life with people that you really know have your back and that genuinely love you and they're going to challenge you and call you out and, 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 and encourage you to grow. And that's a beautiful thing. And so the takeaways I would take from today is definitely that there are people who are out there that care. There are resources like the 9 a.m., the 3 a.m., the Grief Bully podcast, but we have to seek that. It doesn't always fall on our lap or perhaps it did today. It just you didn't know that you were going to stumble onto this episode and, and it helps you, but you definitely need to do that. You also have to remember that it's not over till it's over. And that although you're in your darkest moments, as you were saying that you still, God's not done with you. Your story's not over. If you're still here, if you hear this, then you still have purpose and there's still a chance for you to overcome whatever those areas are, right, mom? Because I know there's areas where people can't talk about. There's things that they can't speak about. So we can tell them, hey, they got a prayer, a prayer warrior right here that's, that's going to be praying on their behalf. And so that's really important. And then this is it, too. I'm on this joy kick. I can't shake it. It comes in the morning. We don't know where your morning is, but it's coming. Mom, give us one inspirational nugget for them as we get out of here. Just something for them to rock with for the rest of their day. A birthday nugget. Uh, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. I love it. I love it. I love that. You've been a phenomenal guest. Do you still feel nervous? No. Okay, because I was going to say you killed it and you showed up and you showed out. And I thank you for lending your love, your light with our community. I'm going to keep continue to have you on this show. It's always a blessing to have you here. I love you dearly. Guys, wherever you are, say happy birthday to my mom. If you are listening to this on Monday when it drops, if it's in the future, well, don't worry about it. Guys, it's been another episode of Grief Bully Podcast. Episode 113 is officially in the books. If you're listening to this on YouTube, drop us a comment. Let us know some feedback. I, I truly appreciate it. I'm only going to grow from your comments and your feedback. I don't know why I have to keep saying this because you guys don't always do it, but please follow me on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most. You already know that. Follow me there at I underscore AM underscore J Nicole. Guys, so next time you already know. Love and light. Peace. <music>